So hello and welcome to this video on the AGH Synth Mini Mod Sample Hold and Slew. Let's check out what's to come before we get into it. So the sample hold and slew is a real kind of ultra toolbox for sample hold and slew. We get a great noise source that has an output that also normals to the sample input. We can change the colour of that noise and we can also clip the noise, changing how this sounds tonally as an audio source, but these work great as ways of shaping the potential outcomes of this sample and hold and it's normaled across to the sample input. This will do sample and hold or track and hold and I've got patches later in the video that go through these behaviours. The output of the sample and hold goes to the slew input, and we get slew time. We can slew all changes in voltage, slew up, which changes rising voltages, slew down, which changes falling voltages only, and we can change the behaviour from a linear to an exponential slew, and then that slew has an output. We can gate the behaviour of this slew so that it will slew while the gate is high, but not when it's low, or change that behavior on this gate invert switch. So you can kind of tailor this to whatever kind of gate rhythms and signals you want to throw in there. The clock output always gives us this square wave clock out from the internal module. So even when it's clocked externally, we can get a great bonus LFO, as if you're not using the slew, you could patch this square wave clock into the slew, slew either the rising or falling edges of that clock, up or down, linear or exponential shape, make a little LFO, and you've kind of got this bonus LFO shape, which is kind of a great little hack that I found when using the module. I wasn't expecting to get a nicely shapeable LFO out of it. So let's hear this in action. We'll go through track and hold in another patch, but I'm going to simply come out of the slew output and we'll take advantage of that normalizing. And this is an oscillating filter with some noise at the input giving us a bit of colour, going into some reverb and into this next phase, phaser, which is next to the sample hold and slew. Turning up the clock rate slightly. Slew is all the way down, so I could in fact come out of the sample output. And let's have a look at how this noise behaviour changes the behaviour of this sample hold and slew. We also have a unique restrict function, which I've never seen anywhere else, which again is extremely musical, and we'll come to that with a quantizer shortly. So restrict all the way down. We're not going through the slew circuit. Let's change the color of this noise to change the effect it has on this filter. You can see in here those changes have become lesser in terms of their potential range. And the output of this is attenuated into the filter's cutoff, so it's not full range, but turning that up full range. Then changing the colour. You can hear how that behaviour changes because the noise source is different that's feeding the sample and hold. Just turning down the attenuation on the filter's input. Here's that clip noise and it will be bouncing between high and low values because the noise input is clipped before it goes into the sample and holds input. Now the colour becomes really obvious here as I turn it to the left it's going to squeeze this in and we're not just going to get as many high and low values. So 
So it's still wanting to bounce around because it's clipped. But we're changing the behavior. Now with this clipped, we'll demo the restrict feature. The restrict is unique and it doesn't attenuate or change the potential range of the output. But what it does is restrict the potential movement between each different sampled value. So if restrict up high, it won't jump this full range of potential values. You're simply restricting the range of motion between steps, not the actual top and bottom signals it can reach. And I've never seen that before in a module. So let's hear how this affects this clip noise coming into the sample and hold. It's restricting those potential values. With a really high restrict, we're not getting wide range in motion between those steps. And running this through, say, a quantizer, it becomes really musical. We get these lovely little flurries of melodic patterns. Restrict all the way down. And with a clip off, It's a nice random pattern that's quantized, but as we start to restrict its range of motion per step, it starts to feel much more pattern based. And the restriction, the clipped color, the color and the clip control on the noise has been great at giving us some really nice little melodic phrases. So that's it for the features and some basic sample and hold. There's a lot of patches to come, so please skip through as you see fit. There's a timing index that's clickable and linkable through the different sections of the video in the description and on screen. Skip around to your heart's content or go grab a drink and let's explore noise, slew, sample and hold and track and hold together across this video. Let's get stuck in. So this is a patch built around the random from the sample and hold. It's the internal noise, patch the sample and hold in, coming out to data so that we can see it, and then splitting this off. One side on this stackable, out to an attenuator and into a quantizer, and I'm splitting it into the control for the cutoff on the next phase, phaser. And I'm just gonna remove it from this quantizer a second. Turn up the emphasis on the phaser. You can hear this just randomly stepping away. Plugging in my quantizer again. What I've done to get this running faster than the pitch sequence is take the clock output. So the internal clock is running the tempo here. This is running out into a divider, just out of shot. I'm dividing this by eight and only triggering my quantizer every eight clock pulses. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, change, and so on. So the pitch is an attenuated version of the sample and hold. The clocking is also triggering an envelope, which is fading up and opening a filter for my saw wave going into the phaser. There's just a little patch that I wanted to share. So here we'll take a look at the gated slew. Now I'm clocking this externally because I've also got an external rhythm I'm going to use at the gate that I want in time. So I could just use this normally, but clocked externally for this purpose. Now the normal in again is noise into sample input. It's sampling a new value from this noise every time the clock hits. The sample output comes to the slew input and I'm coming out of the slew here. Now we can have this is sample and hold as well, not track and hold. We'll look at track and hold later. Now this free position switch lets us slew just rising voltages, falling voltages, or both. This is in the middle, so it will slew both rising and falling voltages. And I've got a linear shape to the slew. So simply turning the slew up. It's linearly slewing to the new values. Now, if this was just a slew up to rising voltages, any 
falling voltages still step down immediately. Likewise, if I was to slew down, rising voltages will rise immediately, falling voltages will slew. And the output is going to the pitch of an oscillator. I can change that shape from linear to exponential, which if I change the scope settings, you can see a little bit more clearly, it's not that linear line between them. It's an exponential rise and fall on this slew. Now the gated slew lets us change the behavior of the slew and it's only active when there's a gate present or when there's not, depending on this gate and invert switch. So here's just sample and hold again, slew time all the way down. I'm gonna add a gate. Slew both up and down, let's say linear shape, and the gate invert switches up to gate. We'd see my external gate on this LED cable, and it's matching up with the activity of the slew, the LED, right on the module. So we'll add some slew time. So it steps without slew when there's no gate present and it smoothly glides and slews between values when there is a gate present. I can change that behavior by flicking the switch to invert. This will slew when there's no gate present and won't slew when there is. So notice the activity of the slew and the gate signal on these LEDs is now kind of opposing each other. So here we'll look at track and hold. I've got a really simple patch set up with a wavetable oscillator into a little reverb droning away. Now the sample output is coming into the scope so we can see it and then we're coming out into my wavetable position on the oscillator. But if I move to track and hold, it's immediately quite different and the noise is normal to the sample input, so we don't need an input to get random step sample and hold. But what happens is, if I slow this down, the track and hold actually lets the input signal through. It's not always just triggering a new hold and a new value, like sample and hold does, so we'll just step and hold and step and hold, randomly in this case, because we're using noise. If we were to use, say, an LFO with the sample and hold and make it say faster, it's a stepped version of the input. However, the track and hold will hold and when it's not holding, it lets the signal through. So if I slow this right down, see so it's holding, LFO comes through, holding again. Track and hold's great with this triangle LFO. You can get nice kind of interrupted triangle LFO patterns in this case. So here we're using the track and hold with audio. The switch for T hold, track and hold, rather than sample and hold is up on track and hold, as, as we need for a track and hold demo. And when the clock is high, or the input has a gate high, the signal's passing through. But then it samples, holds effectively, whatever value the waveform's at when that high signal drops. So it's almost like a freeze and pass. It will sample and hold, but then it will let the signal through, rather than always just holding on a new trigger like a sample and hold would. As I raise this up, we get some of those down sampler type effects. But at lower rates, we can get some rhythmic stuff. So here's a gate signal, just a rhythmic gate pattern into the clock input. And you can hear it's a bit clicky. That's because this is just a hard on and off. There's no smoothing. There's no kind of release or attack to an envelope through a VCA. This is literally just on and off on that track and hold circuit. But with some effects, 
to some modulation of my oscillator that's coming into this and on some pitch information it serves as a kind of hard on and off VCA type thing some drums so super crude VCA if you need it to be an interesting effect so this is just a quick little patch to show you that even though there's a clock in on the sample hold and slew, you can use it with rhythmic triggers. And that's my favorite way to use a sample and hold is to take a pattern. Say if I'm playing on a keyboard and I'm playing a rhythmic pattern or kind of interrupted or just slow pattern that's not a steady clock, use that to generate a new random value. or use a drum rhythm or a trigger rhythm or a random gate like I'm doing here. So it's not a steady clocked stream of this stepped random. So this is a random pulse to the clock in on the sample hold and slew. Sample and hold coming out into this data. And I'm modulating the dry wet on this reverb as well as the tonal parameters on my oscillator. So we're kind of getting random reverb amounts or random wetness. sample and hold that sometimes holds longer than others there's then maybe a little flurry of notes it's random it doesn't have to be steady clocked random plug any gate into that any pattern any logic thing any probability based pattern it's good fun when it's an interrupted pattern and not steady clock so in this part of the video we're exploring the noise source that normals to the sample and hold or we can just break out which is what i've done here as an audio source, it's coming out into data, into this spectrograph, which looks like a pinky purple mess, but it won't do and it'll be useful for showing us frequency over time shortly. This is then coming into a VCA with a random gate, hitting an envelope, and that envelope opening the VCA. Nice, simple percussion sound. So this is in the normal noise mode. And I just want to explore that color. To the left, there'll be some really obvious low pass like filtering. And notice this higher energy higher on the screen will drop out as well. Going the other way. From noon up is like a high passing. Less obvious on here, but you'll hear it. The energy shifts into the higher frequencies. Kind of even noise, if you like, in the middle. And more of those lower frequencies taking that energy to the left. Now, the clip noise doesn't sound that different. Very different when we're using it as a sample source, but listen to the difference. A bit louder because it's clipped it's at the more extremes of its potential values a bit different again when we when we change the color and filter it but very different when we run it through the slew circuit so my intention here just preparing for this patch was i'll run the noise into the slew see if we can use it like a low pass filter so patching that in now this isn't a filter, it's a slew, and we're getting some high end kind of rolling off there to pretty much nothing, it just slews its way out. So it's not gonna be used as a filter, but what's very interesting is just coming through the slew and going into the clip noise, we get a kind of resonant, almost like pitch to the noise. We definitely didn't get that when we just straight came out of the noise. But running it through that slew, and you can see all the energy is starting to kind of bind up around whatever position this colour's at. And it's great. It's like this kind of sonar bleep in a submarine. I mean, run it into some verb and it would be. But it's wicked for percussion. I mean, turning it up, let's say go to a fast clock triggering this envelope. 
and it's a great more tonal pair of hi-hats or hi-hat <laughs> if you like that the normal noise just doesn't give us So something weird that I didn't think was going to happen, but there's some other great percussion sounds in there beyond kind of basic noise sources. You have a kind of sonar, tonal pitch noise, if you like. That gets a thumbs up from me. So here we're looking at fluctuating random voltages or smooth random voltages. Now it doesn't have a smooth or a fluctuated random output, but we can mimic that behavior by taking advantage of all the normalizing that happens on the module. So here I've got an exponential setting on the slew, quite a high slew time, and the switch set to slew both rising and falling voltages. And because that slew time's so high, this is just kind of infinitely fluctuating. Now if I take this out of the patch, here's how it sounds. Wavetable oscillator into a low pass gate, and then the low pass gate into some reverb. When I patch this in though, which is then patched out kind of everywhere, modulating the tuning of the oscillator, the wavetable position, the reverb amount on my spring reverb. Here's a linear slew. You can see we're getting these straight linear lines between the voltages. That's a nice way to get a fluctuating smooth voltage and this is something that I'd heavily attenuate and pretty much patch into everything just to make it feel alive. It's all just moving that little bit. I've over egged it here so it's a bit more obvious but it's really nice when you attenuate this sort of signal into FM, filter cutoffs, low pass gate amounts, envelope times, LFO speeds. It's worth experimenting with. So here we're going to use the sample and hold as a destructive down sampler style effect. I have a simple saw wave going into a filter, coming into the sample and hold. I'm clocking this externally with a separate oscillator well into kind of high audio rates. That's coming into the scope and the scope to my mixer. So opening up my filter, here's my wave, filter wide open, coming through the sample and hold. Now as I sweep the rate of this modulating oscillator, this clock input, as I said, is a square wave oscillator signal, very high audio. I'm going to sweep the pitch of that down. You'll see and hear these steps, this down sampling effect come into it. This sounds great when you sweep the filter over the waveform before you hit the down sampler. Those kind of digital throaty like tones. Just going to drop this down an octave. Take the clock up higher. Make the filter resonance. There we go, a super talking throat singing digital robot thing. I really do like that sound. Sweeping the clock rate lower. This works well over sequences too. So let's add a volt proctive signal to the oscillator that's coming into the sample and hold. Again, play with the clock rate on this external oscillator that's coming into the clock in. And 
realised that was so interactive with the tone changing at the input filtering this wave. I'm going to add an envelope to the filter. And it's got this nice clangorous kind of digital robotic edge to it. I like it when it's really high. And it's just this kind of like cheap digital sampler vibe to it when the clock rate is coming down into audible range. But this is modular. We can have kind of more expression and fun than that. If we modulate the oscillator that's providing the clock, this is just static with me moving it on a simple knob. If we actually add a sequence to it, we get some more interesting effects as well. Now this is a good part of the video to show you how we can get a bonus LFO out of this. We can use the clock output which never mirrors the actual input. The clock output on the module is always the internal clock. Which is a big Brucey bonus for me because I can patch that square wave clock at a low rate. Now granted the LED doesn't show us the rate of the internal clock anymore. It's the rate of the external one, not the internal one. But, it doesn't really matter, we can just do this by ear, we don't need to see the rate of the LFO. Patch it into the slew, and much like we saw in the part of the video where I was slewing this clock, this square wave LFO to make new shapes, we can slew it. So, we can see that blue trace just bouncing up and down, that's this square wave. We could patch that, say, into the filters cut off. So even though we're at audio rate, and again I'll sweep that externally, we still get the square wave. Add the slew. I've got a bonus smooth LFO by patching the clock into the slew and coming out, clocking it externally for this audio rate kind of destruction. And I can use it as an audio processor too. <laughs> I don't know why I said Brucey bonus earlier, but that's a Brucey bonus. <laughs> so here's a patch using the sample and hold to modulate how open a hi-hat is. Now I've split this modulation signal, this sample and hold, out to modulate a wavetable as well. I'll turn that up. And in this beat, it's just a little background thing, but it's nice that it's moving relative to those hi-hats. Adds a little bit of spice to the beat. So here we'll explore using the slew to modulate and slew and process external signals. Well, in this case, it's internal. I'm using the clock output as if it's a square wave LFO, coming into the slew, out of the slew to modulate a wavetable's position on an oscillator. So this just has two settings. It's the high wavetable and the low one. That's it, kind of on and off the binary state of a square or pulse wave. But as I start to add slew to it, and I can slew the upward rising signal only, the mid position on the switch will slew both rising and falling voltages or slew down only just falling voltages. We'll stick in the middle for both and we'll start to round off the edges of this square wave. More like a triangle. Now the shape of that slew can be altered. This is linear if I go to exponential. get this kind of log-like hump in the rising stage and this exponential drop in the falling stage. Just slow this down. There we go, that's the exponential line and that log rise again. Back to 
linear. So if we just slew the upward signal, we get this kind of sawtooth ramp wave-esque wave. Down only. And again, we can change that shape. We also get the gates for the slew. Now by default, with the switch up, the slew is active when there's no gate present. Turning that down to invert the gated behavior simply just turns the slew off. It's a nice simple on and off switch for the slew without having to repatch. If I patch a gate signal into this, flick the switch up, this will now only be active when there's a gate present. So I've used an LED cable, we'll see the LED to show the slew is active, and we'll see that gate coming as well. Let's slew both as well, make it really obvious. Take my gate off. Back on. Inverting the behavior, when the cable's in, it's active all the time and we can interrupt the slew, effectively make the slew time zero and get our input non-slewed version back when a gate is present. Slew off, gate is coming in. Other way around here, gate is active and it's off when there's no gate present. Flicking that up, nothing plugged in, we simply get the slew when it's up and it's off when it's down. So here's a rather strange unexpected alien world I've stumbled into doing this patch. Um, I've got the slew output which has been fed by the sample output and that's going into the mixer and I'm hearing these kind of sub audio thumps and clicks. Now, if, I, if I amplify these and play around with some effects we may get some interesting effects. So here's where I got to, let's just listen for a second. But here's where it started. Now I appreciate this is a wide shot, you might not be quite getting the detail, but get some headphones on and just turn this up. This is the output of the slew, not something we should listen to, the sample output. And we can just hear it clicking and thumping. It's going through a VCA with an envelope control in it, and the envelope has just been triggered by a random pulse. But if I just offset the VCA and open it up, You're just hearing these like DC thumps and clicks, this sub audio sample and hold signal. It's not something you can really listen to. But to kind of interrupt that stream, an unsynced random gate is triggering an envelope and then letting that VCA open and close. By running some of those into a very fast delay for Kaplan's strong synthesis, I'm letting these pluck quite highly, nearly oscillating high feedback delay trails and getting some kind of string-like sounds. Here's adding in that, that's the Eventide DDL. Now if I don't modulate it, delay time is effectively pitch. The more feedback I add, the more likely it is to oscillate. The length of the note, effectively, is the feedback amount. I'm using the actual sample and hold signal to modulate the delay time. And there's some really interesting low end, some great little bits that I intend to sample out of this. Using the expander on the hex mix, that's feeding the delay, the delay's then coming back and feeding a spring reverb, the music thing, little spring reverb down here. And that was this kind of little sci-fi world that I stumbled into. But taking that a bit further, I ran the reverb back in, out of the third send, out to U-Burst, which is a clouds clone, a mini clouds if you like, up into this audio damage EOS reverb, which gives me this in stereo. And it works well as this kind of interactive like I said, alien landscape to be a bit corny about it. Oh, 
got some nice little gestural little rhythms, nice low end, some weird delay stuff, nice little hits of spring reverb, and that kind of uber space from the EOS reverb and clouds before it. Just an odd little patch, and one that I didn't think I'd end up doing, so maybe you didn't think you'd get it in this video either. So we've explored the noise as an audio source, but we can get clocked, down-sampled, digital clock-controlled noise effects as well. I'm coming straight out of the sample output, and the noise is normal to the input, as we've seen. And as I take this clock rate right up to audio rates, There's our kind of digital clock noise. Now by using an external oscillator, I can have a wider range and something that I can modulate. So I'm gonna clock in from an external oscillator. I sweep the pitch of this external oscillator. By then modulating this oscillator to an envelope, we've got old kind of Atari game effects. And this is just an envelope going to the pitch of the oscillator, the square wave from the oscillator into the clock in. Now you run this through a VCA or a low pass gate or some filtering and the kind of whole world potentially opens up in terms of these kind of 8-bit digital noise effect kind of things that you might want to play with. It's great for percussion. But this makes for a nice modulation source as well. So instead of listening to what we're seeing on data, this noise through the sample output, I'm going to patch this up into the modulation input on a filter that just has a saw wave at its input. And as I turn up the frequency modulation on the filter, so filter cut off from this noise, I'm just going to remove the modulation from that oscillator that we had. We could modulate the filter with very high clock rate, pretty much white noise. I really like that effect of modulating oscillators and filters with noise. It's not like mixing noise on top of them. You can kind of hear this filter play into and through this noise. But lowering the clock rate and just adjusting that modulation depth. It's great as a kind of instability modulation source. It's another fun thing to play around with. So this final patch is kind of making use of everything that I can get out of this mini mod sample hold and slew. I have two oscillators, one is droning, one is being sequenced into the mini mod ladder filter. That's coming straight into my mixer it's been sent to a reverb and I'm using the clock source as a bonus LFO because I'm clocking this externally it's like we did earlier I've taken the square into the slew the slew out which is blue trace on data I appreciate that's a bit harder to see with this wide shot but this is being slewed and gated with the slew on and off so it's moving between square LFO and more slewed kind of exponential ramp triangle like wave depending on the speed of the actual internal clock and the slew amount and when that gate lands. That's modulating pulse width on this oscillator. The noise source is coming out into a low pass gate and being struck as a little percussive accent. The colour's really useful there to kind of back that noise off, take some high frequencies out and push it further back in the mix. The sample output is modulating the filter alongside an envelope, and there's the patch. 
Thanks for checking out this video on the sample hold and slew from AGH Synth. I hope it's been useful. I really wanted it to be a kind of massive set of tips and educational tutorial like thing for sample and hold, track and hold, noise sources, making down sampled noise, using slews to make smooth LFOs from square ones, all those different patches. Go back and skip through. There's the timing index below if you want to skip through to anything or tell someone, hey, check out this down sampled noise trick that Ben just did. You should do that. You should share it with people. Thanks for your support. Hit like, comment, subscribe, usual stuff. Go to patreon.com forward slash divkid if you want to support what I do. Check out the other AGH synth videos in the links below. And cheers for watching. <laughs>